One. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be doing something new. It's a new concept, I just thought of it this weekend, but I was thinking it would be fun if we did a mend with me story time. I love traveling, we all know that by now I'm sure, and it's really sad because with recent events, obviously we're not able to travel. So I thought that I would look back at some travel moments and just sort of tell you guys about them while I mend some clothing that needs some fixing because at this time my sewing machine is in the shop, which is very sad, but it's a good thing. My sewing machine and my serger are in the shop actually, so I'm kind of left my own devices right now. I don't really have anything concrete to do besides watch TV edit videos. Yeah, that's basically all I've been doing. So obviously sometimes clothing needs mending, especially clothing that I make. I don't know why, but I still am having to mend a lot of my pieces after they come out of the washer. And actually it's not that I don't know why, it's just I have really bad luck, okay? I don't know. So even pieces that I have like surged will still get holes in them, which is so annoying. And it's mostly my linen pieces because linen frays so much. Um, but I'll notice like after I wash something I'll go back and see like oh my god I didn't secure those seams So and it's not until after I wash it that I realize I didn't do that So I'm still trying to like streamline my clothing making process so that they don't come apart in the wash because that's really Sad and frustrating and I feel like I'm the only person that happens to I'm sure I'm not but anyway I have this pink dress that I need to fix because it has a hole in the pocket and then along the side it has some holes so I'm gonna be working on that and while I do that among you know I have a few other pieces too I'm going to tell you about misadventures in Paris oh where's my scissors hold on I was almost prepared <laughs> so to fix this dress I have my matching thread scissors and my needles I have like a a lot of little needles that I just keep in this little pouch right there that actually looks like pretty scary <laughs> but I'm just gonna grab one of them and we're gonna get started going to Paris has been a long time dream of mine since I was super young I don't know why exactly Paris was the place but it was just the place that I always imagined going to if you have had a place like that in your life comment down below and tell me like the place that you always wanted to go from a young age and so when I finally started planning this trip I mean I'll probably tell a few stories from this trip like as this series goes along, but this trip was, it happened in 2017, it was my junior year of college, it was the summer after my junior year of college actually, and a year prior to this I had gotten out of a really, I wouldn't say it was a bad relationship, but the end was really, really tragic. Like it was one of the most heartbroken I've ever been in my life, like actually quite possibly the most heartbroken I've ever been in my life. And so in that moment, I was sitting there in a bucket of tears. I decided that next year, this is not gonna be me. A year from now, I'm going to be doing what I want to do, what I've always wanted to do, and I'm gonna go to Europe. So that's what I did. A year later, I saved up a lot of money and it still, <laughs> honestly, it still wasn't enough. After about a year of saving up and I actually had some family members donate to the cause because, mostly because they were concerned about me actually, um, and. I planned a trip to go to Europe by myself. And the way that I did this was I got an account with Workaway, which I definitely want to talk about that on its own, but it's basically a cultural exchange website where you meet families and just people who want to host people from other countries and teach them about their culture and all of these things. And all you have to do is like, babysit the kids or help around the house or help with the animals. It's like au pair except it's not just kids and childcare. So that was really great because I definitely did not want to be an au pair. No offense, but I don't love kids that much. So, I mean, hey, I like kids. Let's let's make that clear, but I didn't want to be a babysitter. <laughs> it just wasn't worth it to me. So, what I ended up getting was a deal where I the kids were a little bit older and so I didn't have to like be their caretaker and I just ended up speaking English in the home. But anyway, so that's how I got to Europe. That was the that was the original plan. So I did that for five weeks. And again, I will definitely be sharing more about that in another, you know, story time mend with me video. But 
after that I went to France and so after those five weeks I had another five weeks to just travel on my own so the trip was 10 weeks and I set off by myself it was definitely a trip to remember like I will never forget that time mostly because it was my first solo trip and since then I've solo traveled one other time I took like a six day road trip in California and that was really sweet but traveling alone in Europe I just feel like was so much more magical to me so much more fun but when I was in Paris that was the second place that I went when I was on the solo destination part of the trip and so I flew from Nice to Paris and man it was the it was quite the experience because I had the most misadventure in Paris like I made the most mistakes I wasn't necessarily scammed or anything like that but it just was like really crazy because I learned so much about traveling by myself and just like I don't know what it's what it's really like out there <laughs> so let's start with the night before I got to Paris. So I was in Nice, like I said, and I had gone out to a club and I was being, I was being a tourist in a club, you know? I was just enjoying myself, hanging out. I had a drink with some people in my hostel. It was super fun and then there was a live concert there. And so we were just like really enjoying the music and then after the concert we went down to the beach and it was just like a long night and I was up super late and I didn't charge my phone that night, which was really, really, really dumb. And pretty much the reason that the next day, traveling in Paris for the first time was such a mess. So I get to the airport in Nice, everything's fine. I realized that I hadn't charged my phone, so I tried to charge it like as I was getting ready that morning. And I'm pretty sure I had like a super early flight, so I didn't wake up too much before my flight. It did not get to full battery. And when you're using your phone, like especially in travel situations, you're probably using it for navigating around, like with your maps and stuff, which is like known for sucking your battery. So my phone it didn't take much longer for it to die again like i think when i landed in paris i had 20 percent battery so when i actually landed in paris i realized that i was not at charles de gaulle airport which is like the big super popular airport in paris um i don't know like what i was really thinking when i booked the flight like i don't think that i was thinking anything actually i was just like oh, this route is like the cheapest, I'm gonna go this way. But what I didn't realize was that there are two airports in Paris, or at least major airports. And so I was at the Orly Airport, uh, O-R-L-Y Airport, and that is not, it's, it's not the best airport, let's say. I think it was just really, really hard for me to navigate. And especially like in airports, obviously there is a lot of English still, and you don't have like a ton of confusion as far as that goes. But it was just like very, very confusing of how to get out of the airport because I took public transportation basically the entire time I was in Paris and in Europe in general. So I walked around the airport probably for like, let's say an hour and a half with like all my stuff. I didn't have like a backpacker's pack, but if I did, it probably would have been much worse. I just had like a really heavy suitcase and it was, um, it was a carry-on suitcase so that I could travel light, but still like it was gaining some weight because I was bringing back like souvenirs and just like, I don't know, like usually on trips, like you get things just like really heavy. And as I kept walking around, it, kept, it got heavier and heavier. And then eventually I figured out the train system. So I got on a fast train to like the city center of Paris so that I could get on the metro to my hostel, which later on I found out that my hostel was not very close to the city center of Paris. It was a little bit out and not necessarily like in the greatest part of Paris. Anyway, so I got onto the train finally, and at that point my phone died, which was tragic, really not good. And so I got off, I remembered where I needed to get off to like get onto the Metro. Like I memorized, I memorized like the station name because I knew my phone was gonna die. In my mind, I was hoping that I would see another like American tourist or just like another tourist in general, like whom I understand because I really did not wanna bother any locals with my like stupid tourist issues, like getting lost and whatever, like, because that's probably annoying. I mean, if I was a local, I 
personally wouldn't get annoyed if someone asked me for directions but like I don't know like what the culture is in Paris surrounding tourism like what I had heard at that point was that you know like Parisians get pretty annoyed with tourism which makes sense because can you live a normal life in Paris I don't know someone comment down below and let me know like if you live in Paris is it just constantly full of tourists and is that annoying to you this men job isn't like beautiful or perfect but I think that it'll work for now I think what I really need to do is go at it with my sewing machine, to be honest, but it was really messy, so I needed to clean it up with some hand stitching, so hopefully it will be okay now. Okay, next garment is this white dress, and it needs a lot of work. It's, it's inside out right now, but all of the pockets, um, yeah, the pockets are pretty much completely detached, which sucks, so I'm gonna have to fix that. And I think maybe the side might be needing some fixing. Actually, no, this one I think is just the pockets. Okay, so where were we? Okay, picture this. Solo female traveler lost in Paris. <laughs> Not good. And who came to my rescue? None other than a French Canadian man himself. <laughs> so yeah, I met a man who was French Canadian, so he spoke French. He's actually in Paris because he was filming for a pretty prominent TV show. We like met on the train and I could tell that he was speaking English and he looked nice. Do you mind if I just use your navigation for a second because I, my phone died, blah, 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 you know, I told the sob story. And he's like, oh yeah, totally, that's totally chill, like, go ahead. And so we, like, navigated to my hostel to figure out, you know, where I was going to be staying and where I needed to get off. And so, actually, retelling that part of the story, it makes it sound like, that sounds pretty unsafe, but I guess I felt better about it because I was staying at a hostel and it wasn't, like, my Airbnb. But if I was staying in Airbnb, I probably wouldn't have given him like the exact address, but you know, just so we know. So I knew what stop I needed to get off at. It was a little, it was a few stops after him. And so I just paid attention and listened and you know, did all the things. And then from that point, like I really didn't know how to get to my hostel. I really only knew where to get off on the Metro. And it was a bit of a walk from the Metro to my hostel and Ugh, your girl got very lost very lost okay this was probably one of the scariest moments of my life and not because i felt like super super unsafe but just because i felt so helpless instead of looking for a place to charge my phone which is what i should have been doing i started walking into hotels and i was like hey like speaking really really broken and bad french i'll be honest and i was saying like hey like can i use your computer i just need some directions or can you you know give me directions so that i can write them down and how to get to my hostel which after some thought like was probably pretty tacky to walk into a hotel and be like hey can you give me directions to the place i'm staying that is not this hotel <laughs> and the people were very rude to me and i probably deserved it honestly i'm not going to say that i didn't and so they were basically just saying like in french you know yeah like it's really cool that you're staying in a hostel like good luck with that um basically like ragging on the fact that i was staying in a hostel which nothing to be ashamed of they're super cheap super fun great for community but anyway so after that happened like three or four times i got really really frustrated and i went up to a taxi driver and i told him because okay you know in new york when they like when you get into a taxi uh, i don't know you just say the name of something and they take you there at least that's how it is in movies i've never actually been to new york um, but based off of that i could just say the place so i went up to them hey can you take me to the generator hostel i don't have the address i can see that you have a navigation system which he totally did he could have just typed in generator hotel and taking me to my hostel, but he didn't do that. Instead, he said, do you know the address? And I said, no, my phone is dead. And again, I'm still speaking French here. <laughs> Not good. It wasn't good French, but it was good enough, I guess. I guess he could understand what I was saying, but I told him that my phone was dead and I had nowhere to charge it. And basically he was like, well, if you don't know the address, I can't take you there, even though he literally had a smartphone like on the dash, whatever. Maybe there's certain regulations against that. I have no idea. I don't know. So in that moment, I felt extremely defeated, very, very upset. And I feel like I should reiterate, none of this was anyone else's fault but my own. I'm definitely not blaming the hotel people or the taxi driver for this misadventure. It was 100% because 
I didn't make sure that my phone was fully charged before I left. If I would have just charged my phone in my hostel the night before, I would have never had any of these issues. So let this be some advice to you to don't like not be a cheapskate and buy an external charger and have it charged and also freaking charge your phone. I'm sure that everyone knows this. This is like really common sense, but me intoxicated and 21 in Nice was not thinking this. In my despair, I start, oh wait, also forgot to say, it started raining so it was like pouring rain as i'm doing this as well so i was like soaking wet and i on the horizon really i saw a starbucks coffee <laughs> and if there's anything you need to know about starbucks coffee it's that free wi-fi exists at starbucks everywhere which was the greatest feeling ever because i was like oh shoot they definitely have free wi-fi they definitely have a place to charge your phone and oh i should also say even if my phone was charged i still didn't have reception there because i didn't get a sim card or anything like that which is so idiotic like i was just relying on wi-fi the whole time i was there so if this would have all worked out i would have pulled up the navigation using the airport wi-fi and not touched it until i let like arrived at my hostel I did have an international plan on my phone at that point, but it only gave me like 2G sometimes. It was between 2 and 3G, I think. I could load some web pages, but it was basically just texting and phone calls for a certain amount of cents per minute or something. So had something like really gone wrong, I could have used my phone if it wasn't dead. Okay, so anyway, I pull up to Starbucks, I sit down, at this like table there was no tables that were empty so i sat at a table with this dude and he just kind of like looked at me like kind of be bewildered and i had tears in my eyes i was crying at this point which is a little embarrassing and i put my neck well i first of all i plugged in my phone just set it there to charge and then i put my neck pillow on the table and put my face in the neck pillow and i just started weeping <laughs> Which is so embarrassing. <laughs> I was like so distraught. Not good. And the guy, like, he didn't leave. He he actually was American or Canadian. I, I couldn't tell, but he was speaking English with an accent similar to mine. And he was on the phone with someone. After my little siesta, my little emotional moment, my phone was fully charged and I was able to navigate to my hostel with the Wi Fi from Starbucks. So I just turned on the navigation and didn't turn it off until I arrived at my destination. So that is basically the misadventure in Paris. That is probably the most idiotic travel story I have. I pretty much got a grip after that and I realized like you can't do that kind of crap, Becca, or else you're gonna end up in situations like this every single time you go somewhere, which is just not good. It wasn't safe, you know? So I don't know, traveling as a, a lady by myself there's a lot that I had to think about as opposed to when I travel like with my husband or even like with other ladies. There's a lot that you have to think about and a lot that you have to be aware of because you're the one that's watching your back and yeah. And even if you make friends in your hostel, you can't always rely on them to be there for you, watch after you, make sure that you're safe. You just can't. You can really only trust yourself, which is a little bit morbid, but in that moment, I did not trust myself because I did not do the right thing. So may this be a lesson to anyone out there as I'm sitting in my little chair sewing up my dress. Make sure that you have an external charger when you travel, especially if you're a female solo traveler. Make sure that you buy a SIM card when you get to the airport. It's not that much money. It's well worth it because you don't have to worry about not having reception. There was actually a time later in the trip when Daniel came up and met up with me where we encountered some people in Prague who were in a very similar situation to me in Paris where they did not have cell phone reception and it was raining, it was night, and they could not get back to their hostel. Obviously we helped them out, but that was me just a few weeks prior to that occurrence. Learn from me. <laughs> all right, you guys, that is going to be all for this episode of Storytime Mend With Me. I don't know what I'm gonna call it yet, but I hope that you enjoyed and you had some fun with me while I recounted some memories from Paris. 
If you have any fun travel stories specifically about Paris, I would love to hear about them. I definitely have more to say about Paris, but that would be the first edition of this. I guess this is really helpful for me to like film a video just to see how long it takes because that took about 30 minutes, no editing, and I feel like I obviously did not get to any of the things that I wanted to mend. Like I got to one and a half of the things. So I definitely have a lot more of this coming. I hope that you guys like it because this was really fun. So thank you guys so much for watching. And if you like this, make sure that you subscribe to my channel for more content like this. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.